Inverse kinematics is a very important constraint to know at the top of your head when it comes to 3D artwork. Not only can this knowledge simplify your rigging workflow, but it can also make posing easier and more dynamic in your projects. This process can be used to advance the bones on your fingers, arms, and legs with only a few clicks. And God knows I don't want to spend over 5 minutes posing the legs on my models. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up inverse kinematics and create an advanced and functional rig within a few minutes. So first, before we tackle how to make it, let me quickly explain what inverse kinematics is. To summarize this, inverse kinematics, or IK, is a constraint that allows you to connect multiple bones to a chain that you can flex and control with a handle bone. For FNAF models, this can be very useful for some of our limbs like our arms and legs. Now to set this up, it's actually pretty simple. For starters, we're going to be using UFMP's Wizard Freddy. So first, we're gonna- wait, what do you mean it already has an IK rig? Oh. Alright, so starting off fresh, we're going to select our rig, then switch from object mode to pose mode. Now of course, if we moved our limbs right now, not much would happen besides the ordinary. So, we're going to change this rig into an IK rig. Press tab to go from object mode to edit mode. Press B and drag to highlight our knees, then press G and Y to move them a slight bit forward. This is an important step to make sure the legs bend in the right direction. If it's too straight, or if it's backwards, this is going to happen. Now shift select the ankle region and press E to extrude them backwards and Y to keep them going along the Y axis. Now select both of these bones, press Alt-P and clear the parent to these bones. Now we're going to do the same thing for the knees, but after clearing the parent, move these bones forward. This will be how we control the direction of the knees. Now for organization's sake, I'm going to press F2 and name this bone footik.l. Then I'll do the same thing for the knees with kneeik.l. Repeat this step for the other side, but make sure to put an R for the right side. Naming your bones makes this 10 times easier, believe me. Now we can switch from edit mode to pose mode, select our thigh bone, and go into the bone constraints tab. Once there, select the inverse kinematics constraint. Set the target to the armature and the bone to your foot IK for that side. If you try moving this now, it's quite apparent that something ain't right. Select our thigh bone and set the chain length to 2. This is so that it only moves both of the leg bones. Now when you try to move the leg again, the leg should be moving properly, but we have no control over where the knee goes. To fix this, set the pull target to the armature and the bone to the knee IK for that side. When you do this, there's a chance that your leg might be rotated off axis. To fix this, rotate the pole angle until it looks normal. In some cases, you can just type 90 or negative 90 and it'll work fine. Once you've done this, you should be able to use the handles to move your legs. But it would be nice if his foot can stay in the same place instead of just following the legs. Tap back into edit mode, shift select the foot, then the leg pole, press ctrl P, and keep offset. Now when we move the leg, the foot shouldn't have any more problems. Or so I thought. Select the foot, add a copy location constraint, set the target to the armature, and the bone to- Bone 19! Please name your bones folks, it will make this so much easier. Set the bone to your thigh bone for that side, and set the tail to 1. Now when we move our leg, the foot should stay in the same place. Repeat these steps on the other side, and that should be it for the legs. For the last step, we'll just tab back into edit mode, hold shift S, and make sure the cursor is at the world origin. Now we'll press shift A to add another bone. Press F2 and rename this to our root bone. Now you can just shift select the foot IK, knee IK, and the pelvis, then shift select the root bone. After this, press ctrl P and keep offset. This is so that we can make walk cycles and move the entire body without the legs staying in one place. Once you have that, you should be completely finished with all the steps of inverse kinematics. Oh, right, the arms. If you're gonna give the arm some IK, it basically follows the exact same premise. Tap into edit mode, select our elbows, then press E and Y to extrude them outwards. Then select these bones, press Alt P and clear the parent to these bones. Make sure to drag them back along the Y axis to make the elbow poles. Do the same thing for the hand poles, but don't move these after you clear their parents. Make sure to select their elbows and pull them back as well. Now go through your bones and press F2 to name them to your liking. Make sure to change the end of their names to the respective sides for easier access. Now we can go back to pose mode, select the lower arm, and add an IK constraint. Like we did before, set the target to the armature and the bone to the hand pole for that side. Set the chain link to 2 and set the pole bone to the elbow handle you made for that side. 
Once this happens, make sure to play with the pole angle till your bone ends up in its original spot. How would you know? Easy, guesstimate. Moving our arm pole gives us what we want, but the hand is still having the same issue we did for the foot. Go into edit mode, select the hand bone, then the IK control, and parent them with control P. Go back into pose mode and add a copy location constraint to your hand. Set the target to the armature and the bone to whatever you have your lower arm named. Set the tail to 1 and this problem should be fixed. Repeat these steps on the other side, then make sure to parent the pose to the root bone and with that, you should end up with a fully functioning IK rig. I personally don't use IK arms in my animations, but it's handy to have in scenarios where the character's arm needs to be locked in one place. You can get creative on when to switch from FK to IK in most of your works. If you want to learn how to make your own fully functioning rig, I suggest watching this video linked here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.